Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone have a good meal. So first and foremost, let me thank TEDx QTM for giving me this platform and for this invitation. I'm deeply honored. All right, uh, I'm Daniel. Today, I stand before you not just as a seasoned Gone State chiropractor, as a fitness expert, influencer, but more so as a passionate advocate to a new definition of health. Now, at just years of 32, I've seen a profound impact of misunderstanding and misinformation to our collective well-being. Okay. So in this digital age that is filled of information, it has ushered, a, ushered us in a tsunami where there is an, a lot of unregulated information, where it can drown us in confusion. So now, the impacts of misinformation. Before we proceed, I would like to give you some of my backend story, a little bit about myself. So uh, I've always been interested in fitness and health since I was very young, um, high school, I would say. And I love the idea of being fit. I love the idea of being a high-performing athlete. But unfortunately, back in the days, I don't think I can do it. And I don't think I'm gifted in that sense. So as a half-assed talent uh, or uh, athlete, I started joining gym at when I see a lot of my friends do so, all my family, so I followed. And in the gym, I seek to improve my performance. And sooner or later, I found that I've discovered a whole different world. I've fell in love with fitness. And here's the story. I enrolled into chiropractic because in my fitness, the starting of my fitness industry, as all we know, we do not know the right way to do it. And we do by trial and error. So I got into a lot of injuries, right? And I've seen these doctors and I tried to have a lot of medicine, which doesn't really help me with my problem until one of my friends recommended me to a chiropractor. And this chiropractor just gave me one simple, specific adjustment, and it changed my life ever since. It gives me a different perspective that health can be so interesting, it can be so in invasive, and it can be so transformative. After seeing this chiropractor, I got healed, I continued my fitness journey, and I figured I want to learn more. So I took a lot of personal training courses to improve myself. And since I'm training, I thought, might as well just join a fitness competition. So I did. And um, I would say with God blessings, I got champion at the time. And it gives me some, uh, I would say, some exposures. And just like Professor said earlier, we have to be agile, right? So with that, with that rise of uh, social media trend, I quickly follow through the bus. And since then, I've been managing my social media account and uh, it just got me today and it has been the greatest help ever since. Okay, so no more about myself. Let's go to chiropractic clarity. So let's talk about chiropractic. Anyone of you been to a chiropractor or do you guys know what's a chiropractor? Anyone? Yeah? Okay, so let me just make it very simple for you, right? Just like a car, if you were to drive a car for a long period of time, go through bumps and all that, sometimes the car chassis will go out of position, right? So just like our body, if you lift something heavy, you fall down or you just suddenly twist in the wrong technique, right? It can bring your bone to a bad position. So chiropractors are the mechanics that brings the bone to the right position, right? We help to align your spine. But the, the body is more complicated than that because there is a lot of uh, nervous system that is uh, that, that combines in a complexity. So when you have a bone that is out of position, it affects the nerves as well. And we know that the nerves are very important. We'll talk more about that later. In, in the past, since ancient time, both Western and Eastern medicine recognized the importance of spinal alignment. And we know that spinal alignment can keep, you, keep your spine healthy, but it can also keep your overall, well, uh, overall health for a very long period of time. And proper alignment, it helps to preserve your health, preserve your spine. But if you do have any misalignment, it can actually lead to a lot of problems, a cascade of problems, simple back to you know day-to-day -day back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, to more debilitating problems such as a severe foot drop, meaning to say you drag your foot when you walk, you can't walk, that can actually happen. Um, you can have incontinence, meaning to say you can't control your bowel movement. Or worst case scenario, you can actually end up on a wheelchair. And this, these, are, these are a serious problem where you don't want to live like that. Okay. But, um, you know, in this, um, when we talk about chiropractic care, when it's being administrated properly, 
by a professional, it can have a profound impact, just like what I've experienced, right? It can be transformative. But if it's on the wrong hand and it's being done um, in the wrong way, it can actually have a very bad effect. In the midst of allure of all this ASMR sensation and all these flashy self-manipulating videos, uh, we tend to lose sight because those videos are interesting, right? You hear people go like, <laughs> it's very fun, isn't it? We, we see that all the time. We find that it's very, uh, it's, it's almost healing when you hear that sound. But um, try not to lose sight. Chiropractic is not a simple DIY, DIY process that you can do in the house. It's a process that demands experts and professionals to do it because we need to have years of studies and we need to have a thorough understanding of your, on your structures and nervous system. We need to recognize that having to, uh, you know, having all this self-manipulation doing in a house can cause you a lot of unwanted uh, further degenerative disease in, in your spine. Worse still, if you were to go to all this self-possessed, um, say, self-claim expert, you can actually damage and harm a perfectly healthy spine. Now, uh, sorry, just let me go through with all this. So one of the issues is because most people, they're not properly introduced with healthcare and what's the option out there? They do not know where to go. Say if people, um, anyone have back pain or neck pain here for a while? Sit for a while, you feel tired and sore. Yeah, almost half of you have it, right? So then what do you guys do end up? First, you guys would just uh, leave it and rest it. You guys don't do much, right? The second things that you guys would do would probably just take medicine. The third one probably just try to um, hypnotize yourself saying that, oh, I'm actually getting old, so I'm getting this problem. But it's not the case. <laughs> uh, and we've been receiving wrong information, like what we say, about all this wrong social media advertisement, and the ASMR sensation. ASMR sensation, so good, right? And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of preventable injuries and damages in my career. Like patient could have um, saved herself from you know, going through surgeries, but ended up going to surgeries, so. Now, uh, let me give you some interesting pictures to see, right? So these are actual cases that's happening in the clinic where we see very often. So the first one, we look at the picture on the left. So that's the picture of a person's neck from the side, right? Now, can you see the, the, sh the very obvious object that is shining out in the middle of the neck? Yeah? So that is actually a screw in the neck, right? So this patient is about 70 years old, right? And he have a screw done in his early, early age, which is a common procedure. But he didn't, he didn't remember that. So when, we have, uh, when you have a patient come into the clinic, we will first take a history. We need to know what's going on. So then uh, this patient didn't remember that. And when we take the x-ray, we were like, ooh, there is a screw here. But now, try to imagine this. If you have a patient or if you do have a screw and you go to a masseur, most masseurs don't ask you this kind of thing. Or if you go to any practitioner, self-claim master and whatnot, they're just going to crack the neck straight away without assessment and think of the consequences of that, right? Um, the other one, if you look at the other picture, that's actually your tailbone, which is uh, the bottom part, looking from here. So if you look at the bottom two bones, you can see that it's a bit more protruded, right? It goes sideways. So that's a fracture that happened there. A lot of people can have fracture at the lower back without knowing that they have a fracture. So if you do have a fracture like this, and then you go for, say, another masseur or another self-proclaimed expert, and then you twist it, or you twist it yourself because you see that there is a lot of online videos that teach you how to stretch and twist, then uh, the ending wouldn't be very kind. Now, let's go for something more interesting, more severe, right? So if you look at the picture on the left, you probably think that this patient is dead, right? That's a very bad fracture over there. Now, this, this case is not my personal patient, but this is shared within our group. So again, if you are going um, with this kind of situation, if you do not know how to manage it properly and you delay this kind of condition, just imagine what kind of consequences you'll get. Or even a scoliotic patient. A scoliotic patient is interesting. A lot of people think that when you have scoliosis, scoliosis which is the curve of the spine, you have to go for surgery. Um, the fact is that it's not necessarily the case. Scoliosis can be caused by two cause, causes. The first one is congenital, meaning to say you're born with the spine slightly misformed, right? So if you do have a spine that is slightly different than the rest, it's actually okay as long as it's not giving you any symptoms. So now if you 
if you people tell you that you have a spine that's a bit twisted and then you don't have any pain, but you decided to do something about it, which we do have a lot of patients do that, they started to wear braces and then they start cracking themselves or go to Masu and all that, it will eventually start to develop into a more severe problem like this. Worse still, if you do have a problem like this and you do not know how to manage it properly, it will continue to degenerate and make the curves worsen over time. So this is why it's very important for us to be informed. Okay, now, uh, yeah, something I thought it would be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, we do need a healthy spine. So, so does animals, right? Animals need a healthy spine as well. So uh, just something interesting to throw, throw in to show you guys. Okay. So um, the second thing I'm going to talk about is uh, nutrition. So the food industry sirens with songs of sugary treats and also processed, uh, processed de uh, what do you call that, um, delicates that leads to many astrays. So despite mounting all this information that uh, processed carbohydrates, processed sugar, um, seed oils, or even glutens can bring harms to our body, these culinary culprits are still masquerading as health foods in this day. And we know that obesity and overweight is skyrocketing now. So look at these stats, right? Among children and adolescents between the age of 5 to 19, obesity quadrupled since 1990. So that's 300% growth. We're talking about children here, which is scary. It's not even adults, okay? And over 1 billion people worldwide they're having obesity. And obesity is not normal, right? And 880 millions of adults, 150 millions of children. 2.5 billions of adults are overweight. Just absorb this for a second, okay? And all this is because we swallow the pills of commercial uh, deception. We believe all these marketing tricks and gimmicks that they use. It is imperative for us to seek the truth rather than and reject the narratives of convenience. It is also imp important for consumers to develop the awareness of being able to differentiate the, what's the proper right nutrition rather than you know, just marketing gimmicks. So just something, something to think about, right? So low-fat diet, we do see that a lot being advertised. Is that actually the case? Is low-fat diet the way to go? Not necessary, because low-fat diet tends to put a lot of sugar in it, if you think about it, right? Um, a lot of drinks, they are being fortified with vitamins, right? Uh, vitamin C, even candies, they have it as well. Even snacks these days, right? But really, how does these vitamins um, provide clinical benefits? Don't know. It's just words, right? And is it all about calories, or is it? Right? A lot of people say, I just I measure my calories every day. I do that. But is it actually the case? Is it important? And... Um, High cholesterol food, a lot of parents will say, right, uh, oh, this is very high cholesterol, I shouldn't eat this. Anyone hear that before? Right? But yeah, but actually, from what we understand, um, say people from uh, the Norwegian and people that eat a lot of wild salmon, high cholestro cholesterol food, right, they ended up having a better health, uh, better heart health, uh, you know, compared to people that doesn't eat high fatty acids food. So why is that? So something to think about. All right, so done with, done with nutrition. Um, now we're gonna move on to fitness misconce misconception. Now obviously when it comes to fitness in today's world, uh, the benefits of resistant training, I'm sure that it's widely accepted. But still in this fitness industry, there is still a lot of misconception and misinformation. Now common myth suggests uh, spot, spot reduction, meaning to say I just want to lose the belly, I don't want to lose any, anywhere else. Or cardio is the only way to lose weight. A lot of you probably think that when I want to lose weight, I go run, right? Uh, also, elderly people should be sedentary, and children shouldn't be exercising because you can stun growth. You cannot grow, grow taller, right? Uh, all this information abounds, and we'll talk more about it. Burn calories so you may eat more. This is something interesting, right? It's, is it true that when you eat more, you... Uh, when you burn calories more, you can eat more. A lot of my friends do this, right? They exercise a lot. They say, oh, I burn 450 calories. So next thing I do, I go and find, I go and have McDonald's. Just 300 kilocalories, that's fine, right? But you have to understand that when you're exercising, you're causing, you're inducing oxidative stress to the body. So how our body improves and grows is every time you stress it 
and then it grows with healthier food. But when you stress it and you eat unhealthier food, you're actually causing stress plus stress. So more damage to the body than good. Something to think about. Right? And weight training is elderly, bad for elderly? No, 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 it's not the case. We know that for elderly people, the more muscle strength you have, actually have a direct correlation to their longevity. Meaning to say the more muscle strength they have, the, the longer they can live. Um, and don't stun your growth as, uh, as children, that's also not true. You only stun growth when you injure yourself, right? But if you do it properly, that's okay. Um, and the longer you train, the better. So some people go to the gym and then they train like five hours in a day or something. I don't know, I'm exaggerating. Um, personally, myself, I train three, three to four times a week, every time just one hour. The key is to train right, not to train very hard and train very long, okay? Uh, last one, let's talk about posture. This one is interesting, okay? Because the, a lot of you probably been sitting like this, right? Okay, uh, a, lot of, a lot of you probably have the, uh, okay, who thinks that sitting straight is better? Come. I see a lot of people starting to sit straight right now suddenly, right? <laughs> okay, the thing is, sitting straight may not necessarily be better. If you think about it, right, if you go to a business class uh, flight, for example, or a good chair or a good sport, seats, sport car seats, they're always slightly reclined. Why? Because when you're sitting 90 degrees straight on a 90 degree chair like this, you're putting all the pressure on your buttock. Then that way it can cause more problem. So what you want to do is to sit slightly reclined with your back leaning towards the chair. That way you can better distribute the pressure between the pelvis and the lower back. See? Interesting information. And do you really have to go for surgery if you have scoliosis? Again, not necessary because some people have scoliosis um, by birth and it's not actually a problem. Uh, get a 90 degree chair, this one we talked about. Uh, last one is people tend to sit on the floor a lot. If you do have a, a good flexibility, probably that's a good idea, but most of us, we sit on a chair like this the whole time, so our flexibility is really not that good. When you sit on the floor a lot, you will probably start to notice that you develop some sort of lower back issue. Some of you probably would agree with that. And the last one is one size fit all. Unfortunately, when it comes to manufacturing all this desk and all that, um, we only manufacture everything in one size. But one size cannot fit everyone because everyone's spine, everyone's height is very different. For more petite ladies, probably will find that, hey, when I want to get my back supported, I cannot get my foot on the ground. Or um, when I want to put my foot on the ground, I cannot get my back supported. See, someone is laughing. Uh, and someone who is taller, they tend to hunch a lot, right? Because all these chairs, oh, they're so tiny. They look like they develop a dwarf. So you see all this problem, we have to really, uh, we have to um, hit on and tackle this kind of problem, right? Educators, parents, and you know, even the government have to do something to change that so that our younger generation, they can take care of their spine and preserve their spine's well-being. What I'm emphasizing today is that true health starts from discernment. And true health starts from navigating through the labyrinth of all this misinformation that we have today. We must not be a passive consumer, but rather an active seeker to seek for the truth and seek for new and latest information that will benefit us all, right? To, together, we can redefine the health and we can redefine the future by, by having wellness and making wellness not just a privilege, but wellness should be our birthright. Now, just one more, uh, one more quote for you. The first step towards change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. In this world where a lot of information is gushing, a lot of new information, a lot of new research is coming, we have to accept that some information that we were being taught since young might not be true. Learn the new information, accept it, move on, stay stronger, stay healthier. That's it. Thank you very much.